Hello friends or ex-friends. Today we're talking about friends. <laughs> I always say hello friends. So until I said that out loud, I was like, that sounded weird. But yeah, today we're talking about friends. This is a topic on my channel that I've gotten some really good feedback on. So I figured it's time to bring this topic back and reintroduce it because this is something I've never gone over, which is taking your old friends back. Taking It's like taking an ex back, except the friendship version, taking your ex friend back. Do you do it? Do you not? This is something that I have a lot of experience with. I constantly go through seasons of friendship with different people. Like you would imagine a TV show, season one, season two, season three, I have the same thing for friends. There was one friend that I had from high school. We went through so many seasons. I think we went through four seasons. Then we put it to rest in 2018 and we're like, okay, time for the series finale. Let's let this shit go now. So this video today is to help you guys out in the process of deciding on whether or not you want to take your ex-friend back. So there's a couple ways you can really look at the ex-friend situation. There's people who wronged you. So there's like those toxic friends that did you dirty. There are people that you simply just drifted from. You grew up, you grew apart, life happened and you lost touch. There are people that were incompatible with you. Maybe you got into petty arguments all the time and you finally realized like, I'm over this shit. I don't need this. I'm too grown for this. I don't have the energy for this. They didn't do anything wrong, but you just, your energies didn't align. And then there's the ones that you've wronged and that you feel like you owe them an apology and you look back and you're like, eh, I kind of ruined that friendship. I'm sure there are other situations, but I feel like these are some of the most common ones. So I'm gonna talk about these. So through this video, I'll be giving personal examples because I feel like when I relate my own stories to things, it's easier for me to go in depth on the topics. So I will be talking from a personal uh, perspective, but I hope you guys don't think I'm trying to make it all about me. I generally just like want you guys to feel that I've been there, I understand you, and I'm speaking from a place of experience when I try and give you guys advice on this topic. Okay, so let's talk about the friendship that you fucked up on. It's your fault. You're the one that ruined the friendship. I'm sorry, that was harsh. But in all seriousness, we're not perfect humans. Sometimes we are wrong. Sometimes it is our fault and we are the problem. And I've been there. Just recently, I've actually gone through this process with an old friend, so I'm happy to share that with you in like the, the most brief way I can. So. Pretty much I had a friend and you know, we had some issues in our friendship and towards the end of it, you know, neither of us were perfect. We both were all over the place in our friendship. We were young, but towards the end of our friendship, I wasn't the best person and I kind of like ruined the friendship in a way without realizing it. And I was so unself-aware at the time that I just didn't really take in like what I was doing to us. And eventually years later, I realized I was having the same problems in my romantic relationship with my then boyfriend that these issues that I had with this friendship years ago were resurfacing and making its way into my romantic relationship. And it was really just, it really just had me fucked up, you know? And I finally realized my toxic traits and I was able to acknowledge what I did to the friendship years ago. So I reached out. You can do that. You can put your pride aside and reach out. What if they ignore you? So they ignore you. What if they laugh at the message? Oh, they laugh at the message. What if they are like, why is this bitch hitting me up? Who cares? Do you want to wonder your whole life? What if I reached out and we could have had a beautiful friendship? You don't want to wonder that. If they ignore you, that's okay. I actually got lucky because I had this whole paragraph typed out to send to this friend, like in my notes section. I read it to my then boyfriend and I was like ready to send it. Like it was like, you know, it was happening. And I was scared. I was scared to send it because I was like, damn, I haven't talked to her in years. Like this is so crazy. I was ready to send it, but I also wasn't ready. And then out of nowhere, she added me as a friend. So I was lucky because I had like that little push, that little reassurance, like, hey, like, you know, things are okay here, which was so weird, by the way. The fact that she added me, <laughs> I'll never get over that. Like she literally added me as a friend the day I was gonna message her and it just like scared me. I thought I accidentally did something on Facebook, like, because I was like, how, how did she know that I was gonna hit her up? So I did send the message and um, I sent a long paragraph uh, with an apology opening up and just addressing like our past and that's something that you can do just send a message and say sorry acknowledge what you did wrong let them know that you've changed let them know that you hope they're doing well give them the option to meet up if you want to but you could just start the message by saying like hey 
I hope you're doing well. I just want to say like I thought back to our friendship. I'm very sorry about what happened. Explain why you're sorry. Don't just say I'm sorry. Explain where you went wrong and why. So they know like okay, she actually gets it. And they'd be like, I understand if you don't forgive me, that's okay. I understand if you don't want to respond, that's okay. I just wanted to put this out there because I felt very compelled to do so. I hope you're well. Praying for your family, blah, blah, blah. Take care. Speak from the heart, that's what I did. Anybody that was close to you at one point will feel your genuineness. Is that a word, genuineness? From there, they can decide if they want to ignore you, if they want to respond to you, if they want to tell you, don't ever fucking hit me up again. Like, they'll choose what they want to do. Chances are, they will respond because Usually that feeling is very mutual. Even if they hated you at one point, they will probably still respond. So that's one situation. Another situation could be, like I said, you know, you grow up, you grow apart, things change, shit happens, life happens. And in this case, it's very easy to just hit them up because you don't have to apologize. You just have to say, hey, it's been forever since we've talked. We always had a really good friendship, you know. I was looking back at old pictures, blah, blah, blah. Send them an old picture and be like, this day was so crazy. I really hope you're doing well. I'd love to hear where you're at in life and blah, 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 how's your family? Send one of those because it's a very neutral message where it's like, hey, I just want to see how you're doing. And you know, like we had a good friendship, things were cool and things happened. Let them know there's no beef, there's no animosity, nothing. It's just like, we both know that we grew up and that doesn't necessarily have to turn into like a best friend situation but it's really easy to like reunite and just catch up because i had one of those too she hit me up and she you know sent me a message a very reminiscent nostalgic message and i was really happy to read it i was like wow like blah 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 like oh my god how have you been we caught up and then eventually we, we met up for drinks and we had a really good time are we best friends do we see each other every month no we probably see each other like once a year we catch up things are cool nice bond but we don't put pressure on ourselves to be the best of friends because at the end of the day we have grown up we are different we have changed but we're still able to have you know a little bit of a connection that we can maintain and we don't put pressure because we still have our own lives and you know and that's okay so that's another type of friendship that you can look back on and decide like hey do i want this person in my life but you also have to understand like if you grew up and grew apart at one point the chances are it happened for a reason and don't force it into being a friendship that is not meant to be because then you might ruin it you know what i mean like if you see them every week and stuff and then you realize shit like you know what old habits are coming back up like you don't want to go there you want to keep it good you want to keep it pure don't pressure yourself to be like how things used to be because that might not happen so let things play out naturally don't force it and whatever's meant to be will be. The next situation is somebody did you dirty and now they want back in your life. These ones I've learned the hard way, it just doesn't work, it doesn't work. If you are going to live your life wondering what if, give it a try, do your thing, see what happens. But I have learned it doesn't work because this is what happens. They hit me up, oh my God, hey Ashley, how have you been? I see you doing that YouTube thing, grand, 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 hustle, hustle. And then they let me know what they think about my life and like, Everybody always says like I seen what you're doing online and blah 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 Then they ask me how I've been and then they want to go grab a coffee. I meet up with them toxic relationships They're fun. Okay, they are toxic These are the type of people that you'll fall into old habits so quickly you guys will get close right away That's what happened with me every single time this happened We get close like this in like a week. We're best friends. We see each other all the time We hang out hang out hang out everything feels like back to normal like things are good it's like a honeymoon phase in like a matter of days we literally just fall back into our old friendship and this has led me nowhere like i remember there's this one girl that i reunited with in like 2016 and we were so close for two years when i tell you we're so close i mean we we're like sisters she like lived at my house i like lived at her house constantly like together and this was an old friend of mine from high school that we stopped being friends for like three and a half years and that's when we reunited 2016 so um what happened was in the time that we got close um i noticed that all her behaviors and toxic traits and things that didn't mesh with me were all the same things that we went through in 2013 and i was just like oh my god like yeah these two years are fun but i can't do this anymore like this is this is the same situation because even the message that she sent me um it wasn't really much of an apology it was just kind of like 
I'm sorry for how things went down, blah, blah, blah. Like there was no acknowledged behavior. There was no like evident changes in life. Like, yeah, she grew up, but there was no, you know, behavioral changes or men mentality changes. Like she looked at life the same way. She was still just as um, stubborn and all the, all the traits that didn't mesh with me, right? So those were things that because that didn't change, we couldn't have this friendship work because we were just incompatible and she was toxic. I don't know how she is now. I'm not trying to be shady at all. I have literally zero hate in my heart for her. Like she was fun. She was a fun person. She was a cool friend, but she was toxic at that time in her life to me. And I felt dumb because I was like, the reason that I'm cutting you off is the exact same reason that I cut you off in 2013 and the exact same reason that I cut you off before that. Cause we were like on and off all the time. And I felt so dumb. I felt so dumb, but I was also like, okay, but these two years were fun and like we had a good time, but I felt silly. So to me, these friendships are not worth it because you probably will end up right where you started. But again, if it's like something that's gonna eat at you until the day you die, give it a try, but don't put too much pressure on it and don't have your expectations be up there because you will likely be disappointed. And I hate to say that, I don't like being negative, but I'm just being real with you guys. So now I wanna talk about the people who you're just straight up not compatible with. So these people, it's very likely that it's gonna end up the same way that it did when you stop being friends. If you try and like fall back into old habits, kind of like the last one. It's one of those where you can be friends, but because you're incompatible, you will have little arguments, you will have little, you know, problems every now and then because you're just straight up incompatible. I think that when you grow up, you can either learn how to deal with that incompatibility or you keep them at arm's reach. So for example, maybe when you were friends in the past, you spent every weekend together or maybe you went out every week or you know, you were constantly with them at their house, mixing your personal lives together, mixing your friends together and you were incompatible and this caused a lot of disruption in your life and in your friendship. Going forward, if you reunite, it's a good idea to keep them at arm's length. So what this means is you don't get close to them. You can have a close bond without seeing them all the time. If you're incompatible, the more you're with each other, the more these traits that don't mesh will come up. So that means see them every few months, see them maybe once a month, don't mix your friend groups. Keep your life and friendship with them separate from your other life because that could cause problems. Maybe don't bring them to your family. Maybe just keep your friendship outside the home until you can decide if it's like worth it or not. To me, I feel like when you're incompatible with someone, that doesn't change. I don't think seven years will change that. I don't think 10 years will change that. I don't think 30 years will change that. It's compatibility it, it's a thing it's it's in you like you're not changing your who you are and your personality and that's something that you just have to come to terms with me i have a friend that if we see each other too often we'll bump heads or you know we'll get into it not really now when we were younger yeah but now we know we're, we're mature about our friendship we know how to navigate it and we don't see each other as often as we could. We know that we can love each other from a distance and it's all love and we don't take it personally. So that's how you should navigate that type of friendship. So all in all, is taking an ex friend back a bad idea or a good idea? Only you know the answer to that. To me, I think it is worth exploring. I think that you just have to do it in a mature way. You cannot go into it the way that you used to. You have to look at them from a fresh perspective and you have to give them the newest version of yourself. And if you realize that you are the same people that you used to be and it's not working, you have to be honest about that and come to terms with it and end the friendship because you can't hold on to it for no reason. You just gotta be real with them and you gotta be real with you. It all comes down to self-love. Do you love yourself enough to, you know, be honest with yourself about what's meant for you and what's not, no matter how bad you want it. I think taking an ex friend back can be a really great thing if done properly and if with the right people. I have some friendships that I've, you know, rekindled over the years and I hold them near and dear to my heart and I'm still friends with them to this day and I'm very happy looking back that I gave them that chance or that they gave me that chance because sometimes it's worth it. If the, if the bond is there, sometimes it's just a matter of being young and fucking stupid and letting petty things get in the way of a good friendship. And then you grow up and you realize like, hey, that wasn't worth throwing out over this. You know what I mean? So I think it's a beautiful thing sometimes and I also think it's a dumbass mistake sometimes, but you live and you learn and you have to give yourself 
the room in your life to make mistakes and don't hate yourself for it you know like go through it just go through it grow through it learn through it and evolve and that's how i think these can be navigated if you have a question about taking back an old friend let me know if you have like advice that you need send me an email my email is in the description ashleyfloristv at gmail.com and i'll make a video on it again i have so many personal stories to do with this like i am known as the bitch that takes friends back like i am constantly like guess who hit me up on facebook mm-hmm i think i'm gonna go to coffee with her and just see where she's at and then three weeks later we're bffs and then like one year later we're not friends anymore like i am notorious for that ask any of my friends like it's embarrassing sometimes but hey it is what it is so if you need advice let me know i got you because i've been the fuck through it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a like follow me on instagram i am on a social media break at the moment but follow me i will be active again one day posting my fire outfits all summer long but with that being said i hope you enjoyed i think i said that yeah i'll see you in the next video bye guys